Hey there guys, Jerry here, aka Mitsuhani, back again with another video, and today we got the Rogue cards revealed from Perils in Paradise here, and uh, we got some pretty interesting ones. Actually, I think Rogue here has gone in a weird direction here, but I actually like the direction that this type of Rogue is going. Um, it's not as like low to the ground and slap you in the face as... Some of the other decks here are, and finally here we've gotten some like non-super aggressive pirates here, pretty much here, I'm going to say, is not, you know, they're not going to bash your face in, so to speak, here. But let's go ahead and start off here with Maestra uh, Mask Merchant. It is the Warlock Taurus card, and it is a 6-mana, six 6-5, six Battle Cry, Discover, a hero card from the past, from another class. Uh, that's important to note here because Scabs is really good in Rogue, uh, but it is not going to be something that you're going to be able to discover. But you are going to be able to discover something like Guff or any of like the Death Knight hero cards. Uh, obviously, you can't discover the stuff that's in Standard right now, so no Headless Horseman or anything like that. No Reno. Um, well, you can discover the Mage Reno, but not the... Reno that we have currently in the standard. You wouldn't be able to discover them anyways because it has to be a class card. Uh, so this one is a little bit harder to rate, but it does seem like it's something that might actually be playable. I would assume that out of the hero cards that you can discover, you're probably going to hit at least one uh, that is playable. Some of the hero cards here from like Alterac Valley were pretty good. Um, so... I can see, you know, at least one of the three hero cards that you're going to get as a selection is going to be good enough to pick. Uh, you do have to invest six mana into this, which does not make this free, but I th would assume that this is going to see play anyways, because you're probably going to want to play some of the Warlock cards uh, in the deck that you're putting this in anyways, so... Yeah, because this is the Taurus card too, I would assume that this is going to see play. I don't think it's like an overly good card or anything like that. So I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I think it's just a smack good value generator card. Um, it's definitely interesting to think about here, just on average, like what how good a hero card is from the past in today's Hearthstone. Uh, but there definitely are enough to get the ball moving here in the right direction. Uh, so I do like this one. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Uh, next up here, we got Treasure Hunter Eudora, a 6-mana 4-5 pirate. Battle cry, go on a side quest to discover amazing loot. Play three cards from other classes to complete it. So right here you have the side quest here, and the reward is discover two amazing pieces of loot. And these are like the Kazakazan... Uh, treasures essentially is what it is. So you got all of these that you could discover. So it is a lot to do. This is definitely it seems like more of a fun card to mess around with in free time and not something that's going to be like super competitive. Now on the scale here I would say that this is probably going to be like one of the more higher rated community cards because this is one of those cards that seems like it's a lot of fun, um, but it's definitely one that I do not see seeing play in, like, ladder, like, trying to legit ladder, climb ladder, or anything like that, so I'll give it a 2 out of 5. I think it's a really cool and neat card, but it's just not something that's going to uh, be meta-defining or anything like that, so 2 out of 5 for me on this one. Next up here, we have Snatch and Grab, an 8-mana spell. Uh, destroy two random enemy minions, cost one less for each card you've played from another class. Keep in mind here that you can play the rogue cards in Paladin, uh, but if you're playing Paladin, that means you have to play rogue cards to get this to uh, get a cost reduction. So, probably only going to see play an actual like Thief Rogue. Uh, the problem with this card is, 
I don't know how much you actually would want to pay to destroy two random enemy minions. Yes, we had like crushing walls that destroyed two for seven. I think nowadays it'd probably be like five mana, so you have to play like three cards from other classes to get this to five. Uh, and even then, I'm not even sure if that's good enough to see play in today's standard. I'm gonna give it a three out of five, but I'm not. This is like one of the cards here that I'm leaning more towards like a two. It's probably more of like a two and a half point five out of five, but I'm leaning more towards the two than a three rather than you, because usually it's the other way around if I give him like a 2.5 out of 5. But I'm not super high on this one. It is just like super random, little, not very like cost efficient, and you kind of have to play a lot to get this cost reducted to begin with anyways, which means like you have to invest in things that you probably don't want to be doing uh at that time at especially at that time so uh things that cost you tempo are usually not that good and this one's just a little too over cost if this started at seven i could maybe see it or six even but because it doesn't start at those it starts at eight it's a little bit too uh up there in price so yeah i give it a two and a half out of five now i'm thinking about it uh, Swarthy Sword Shiner. A 3 mana 3 3 pirate battle cry. Set the attack and durability of your weapon to 3. Uh, so for Paladin here, a lot of people are just thinking about like Quick Pick and obviously Painter's Virtue. A lot of people forget here we have like Muster for Battle in the standard. So if you go like Coin Muster for Battle and then you can play this, uh, if you're playing Lanessa and your Paladin deck here. That's actually fine. You get a 3-3 weapon from your, you know, muster for battle after you attack with it that turn and then the next turn play this. That seems fine. Uh, even with, like, the rogue hero power, it's fine, too. If you remember back in School of Mance Academy, there was, like, a 3-mana three 3-3 three that gave your uh, weapon plus 2 attack. And that's all play. This is a battle cry, so it sets its stats. Uh, so it even if this dies, it's still going to be there. So it's this seems like a fine card. It's a 3 out of 5. It's not super exciting. Yes, it does work with like Quick Pick and Painter's Virtue, like I said. Those are the two cards that are going to be the most talked about. But there's other things that are out there, too, that are like perfectly fine with this. So uh, I think this is just a good overall decent value card. 3 out of 5 for me. Uh, conniving con man, four mana, four four pirate battle cry. Replay the last card you've played from another class. So this is like mini tests. Uh, again, this is probably more powerful in the paladin class. It's going to be playing rogue cards because it will recast the last rogue card that you played. Uh, is that something that you want to be doing though? Probably not. I would assume not. There's just not a lot of like super powerful things here anyway, but. It does seem like it's probably going to be good enough to be tampered with, at least. So, I'll give it a 2 out of 5. I don't, again, I don't think this is, like, one that you really have to, like, sit here and scratch your head about on how you're going to use this. Maybe we'll get something in the mini set that's a little bit better, but, uh, you know, the, the replay, at least. But we'll have to wait and see. Knickknack Shack. Three mana uh, location with four durability. Draw a card if you play it this turn. Reopen this. Uh, this card probably has wild implications too. I think this is like perfect for like miracle style decks here. So uh, obviously Miracle Rogue in standard. Uh, but I don't think there's like a super good Miracle Rogue deck out there right now for standard. I think this is just going to be like fine value card in standard and in wild where you do kind of have like those Miracle Rogues that are there. I think that's where this shines. I think this is a 4 out of 5 in wild. I think in standard right now, this is probably like a 3 out of 5 for me. But it's super playable. Good location. This is like something that you kind of want 
off of like if you're playing in your deck or off of the the two mana two two that discovers the location but you probably don't want to be playing rogue if you're playing that thing so if you're playing that thing you're probably not playing rogue so on and so forth uh again paladin can abuse this card too so uh keep that in mind too so in those aspects here that's why i'm giving it a three out of five in standard i think it's actually still playable this is a fine one in standard uh, but in wild, where this can probably be abused, I think that's where this is going to shine. So that's why I'm giving a 4 out of 5 in wild. Uh, Metal Detector. 3 mana, 2-2 two, two weapon. After your hero attacks and kills a minion, get a coin. I don't like this weapon solely just because this is like too niche of an ability. And on top of that here, the fact that this has to kill a minion means that you have to face tank something. Uh, just to net a coin. I don't think that's good enough for me. So uh, this one I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5. It does have like some capabilities again here. But it's just not something that's exciting. And something that gets the brain going. Yes, we still have Wishing Well in Standard. But there's other cards here in the set. And in Standard in general. That probably go better with Wishing Well. So uh, 2 out of 5 for me. Seashill, 3-mana, uh, 3-2 three three, pirate, battle cry. The next card you play from a non-rogue class costs two less. Uh, believe it or not, I believe Zeddy read this one wrong. It has to be a non-rogue class. That does not mean this reduces neutral cards. It only reduces class cards. So uh, you can play this in Paladin. It's going to reduce your Paladin cards. Obviously, I think the thing that everything buddy at least for me, goes to is you coin this out on two, you play Sandcastle on three, you get a big minion, boom, you start really fighting for the board, which Sandcastle seems to do pretty well. Uh, or you get Nalenissa out on three and start casting some cheaper spells. So we'll have to wait and see here. Uh, seems fine, not super good at all because you still have to play a three mana three two to get that cost reduction. Uh, but if there's something at the 6th drop spot that seems really busted or really good, this gets a lot better, So, because then you're going to play it on curve 3 and the 4. Uh, so, yeah, I like this card enough to give it a 3 out of 5. I don't like it enough to, that I think it's going to be like meta-defining or anything like that. So, yep, I mean, mana cheat's always good in Hearthstone, and this is mana cheat, so... Oh, Manager, uh, two mana spell, deal two damage, combo, get a coin. Simple enough card, like it. Obviously, with the Lanessa, this casts twice, you get two coins. The coins cast twice, which net two mana. So you can start comboing off here if you start thinking about some stuff here. Uh, so, yeah, I think this card's probably going to see play at some point in time. Obviously, this goes with Wishing Well, too. So you got that going for it. It can go in the multiple archetypes, which makes it super... Uh, versatile, so I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. I think it's super playable. And then lastly, here we've got Petty Theft. 2 mana spell, get 2 random 1 cost spells from other classes. This is the card that we saw in the uh, opening video, or opening day thing for her Perils in Paradise. Uh, seems fine. Obviously, what they were showcasing here was the Lanessa synergies, uh, but I don't think this is something that's going to be like super impactful. They're one cost spells, uh, so you got that going for against it a little bit here. But uh, you, you do get cheap spells from other classes that you can get your bell rock to trigger off of, so you do have that working for it. Uh, so I'll give it a three out of five. I think it might see some play, but the fact that this is two mana and not one mana is what's kind of hurting it. I think I think this might be closer to a two than a three. And that is going to be it for Rogue. Next up here, we got Warlock on Monday. I will throw a disclaimer out there that uh, for the next few days of spoilers, I think it's Warlock, Death Knight, and... Ooh, is it Shaman after that? I think it's Shaman after that. Let me just double check here really quick here. 
I'm pretty sure Shaman, because we have buttons. So, I'm pretty sure it's Shaman the following day. Yes, Shaman is the following day. So, for those three days, uh, and partially on Thursday, which Thursday is uh, 4th of July. So, I don't know if we'll have any spoilers on the 4th of July. Ooh, actually, here. How is that? Workout with the 4th of July falling on next Thursday. Bear with me here for a second here because I am just checking something. But I know for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which would be Warlock, Death Knight, Shaman, that I definitely will not be here because I will be on vacation those days. So a little bit rough. To get that done here and from the way it looks yes from the third now we do have a spoiler on the fifth here but no nothing until the eighth so i will be back on the fourth so i'll probably post those videos for shaman death knight warlock on that night and then we'll have a little bit of a break before they spoil the Demon Hunter cards the following Monday here. It looks like it will be a long weekend, uh, which is fine. Nice to have a little bit of a break in there here for the holiday. So I will see you on the 4th of July next week or the 5th, probably early hours of the 5th is what it's going to be. But hopefully you guys enjoy the holiday break here a little bit, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.